Now that we've seen some examples of the kinds of data science applications we'll be talking about in this course, let's go into a little bit more detail about what data science actually is. A definition that we'll be using in this class is that data science is the application and understanding of algorithms that help you make sense of data, that exploit patterns in data to help you understand those data. In this course, we'll be talking about a variety of applications, and I hope that you as students will help uh, find more exciting applications of data science in a variety of fields. By the end of this course, I hope that you'll be able to take a problem and figure out what sort of data you need, what kinds of data science tools and algorithms you can apply to the data, and know whether it's a good idea to do that or not. Part of knowing whether it's a good idea to apply a data science algorithm to a data set or not is understanding the limitations of data science algorithms and knowing what they can't do. At the end of this course, I hope you'll be able to go out and given some data set and some tool you want to apply, you'll be able to understand what the tool does and apply it to the data set in a sensible way. A blueprint for the kinds of things that we'll be doing in this course are to take some algorithm, apply it to data to find some patterns, and then use those patterns to do something interesting. Data science is a really broad umbrella. There are many things that we'll be talking about in this course. We won't cover all of them in the same depth, but here is a list of the kinds of things that we'll be talking about in this course. You can see the full schedule of the things that we'll talk about on the course webpage. One thing that I'll talk about a little bit more now is the distinction between supervised and unsupervised methods, and the distinction between continuous and discrete data. Those two axes do a good job of describing the content of the course once we get past the initial introduction of the programming languages and the statistical background that we'll need for the course. So let's first talk about supervised versus unsupervised models. Supervised models use explicit labels that you've been given by a human and try to replicate those labels. You can think about labeling an email as spam or not. A human provided those labels, you want to reproduce those labels on your test data. Going back to our XYZ formalism, this is about going from X's to Y's. Unsupervised problems are less clear-cut. Here you have some data X, and you want to find patterns in those data Z. You don't know what the right answer is. The goal is for the algorithm to discover something that is reasonable. This could be clustering images into groups, clustering documents into groups. This is harder to evaluate. In contrast to, say, a spam classifier, where you either get the answer right or wrong, dividing a set of images into 15 groups or 14 groups is one right or one wrong. Both could be correct in different ways. So, it's harder to evaluate unsupervised algorithms. The other major distinction that we'll be making in this course is discrete versus continuous data. So let's now talk about discrete versus continuous data. Discrete data is when you have data divided into completely different buckets. If you talk about, say, the nationality of someone, that is assigning one of several different labels to an individual, and it doesn't make sense to, say, take the average of a Canadian and an American. But what you can do with continuous data is you can average those data. So if you have a temperature of 79 and a temperature of 77, their average is 78. If you can assign a value on a number line, you have continuous data. Other examples of continuous data are, for example, stock prices. So now that we have these two axes of how we can divide data science algorithms, whether they're operating on discrete versus continuous data, or whether they're supervised or unsupervised, we now have a variety of problems. If you're applying supervised algorithms to discrete data, this is called classification. And we'll look at algorithms like logistic regression and support vector machines. If you apply unsupervised algorithms to discrete data, this is called clustering. And we'll look at algorithms like k-means and latent Dirichlet allocation for solving these problems. If you apply supervised methods to continuous data, you get problems like regression, and we'll look at linear regression. Unsupervised algorithms with continuous data are often called 
dimensionality reduction problems, and we won't be talking about them in this course. Another important thing that we'll address in this class is how to actually represent data on a computer. A lot of the data that we'll talk about are unstructured. You get a raw image, you get a raw document, and you need to turn that into a form that a computer can use. Doing so is more of an art than a science, and data science is often about creating representations that are useful, efficient, and are easily understood by both a human and a computer. Another major aspect of this course is understanding the assumptions that algorithms make, and communicating what the algorithms are doing to a lay user, or someone like your boss, who needs to make the ultimate decision about whether to use these methods or not. So, for example, when you represent your data, there are many choices you can make about how to represent the data on a computer. You can look at the document as a jumble of words, and completely throw out the order of the words. This is quite common, but loses a lot of information. You may want to do something less efficient, but that preserves more of the information. How do you know when to make that choice, and when is it justified to go from a jumble of words to actually looking at the sequence of words? And when these algorithms are being used to make important decisions in the world, how do you know whether you have made good choices about the algorithms and the data that can lead to these algorithms being used in ethical and useful ways?